Dugs. Can the comeback continue? Initially down three games to zero, deliberately offensive has brought this thing back to 3-2, but the series has moved out of the thin air of Coors Field and into the Canadian air of the Rogers Center. Tris Speaker takes the mound today, which is net ideal for the offensive for a couple of reasons. The first is that he's just a god-awful pitcher, but the second is that this will actually likely limit the number of at-bats he has during the game. We've seen some absurd offensive performances this postseason, but Speaker has put them all to shame. He's currently sitting on eight home runs in this series alone. Babe Ruth up in the first inning, and he'd like to remind you all that Speaker's accomplishments are all fine and good, but he's still the Sultan of Swat. That's his fourth home run of the series, and the second time in two games he's homered in his first at bat. Offensive leads, 1 0. But Tom Brown throws it right back in their face with an RBI single, evening it up at 1. Dave Brain comes to the plate later in the inning, and that usually means a run. This time is no exception. That is a double scoring Tom Brown and the Jacks lead 2-1. Hobie Ferris keeps it going. It's 3-1 Jacks. Since Hobie's at the plate, I'm going to remind you all about the fact that he struck out against Rod Carew last game. Let's see it again. Ah, it's just terrible in such a wonderful way. It's like one of those award-winning ugly dogs. Top of the third and deliberately offensive is still deliberately offensive. That's Mike Schmidt who's had a beast of a series in his own right. That's home run number five. With a man on, that draws us level once again at three. In the bottom of the fourth, Tris Speaker's fatigue gets the best of him, but this was one of the better performances we've seen out of a deliberately offensive pitcher. He gave up three runs while going three and an additional two thirds of the current inning. That's all you can ask for. So Pujols comes in in relief, and he's got two down with Bobby Thompson at the plate. He came into the game hitting 588, and he crushes one here, but it's right at the center fielder. Unlucky. We're still tied at three going into the fifth. Rogers Hornsby gets a chance here with runners at the corners, but two out. Like an over-enthusiastic strongman getting ready for a job interview, that breaks the tie. Deliberately offensive takes a 4-3 lead. As offensive takes the mound in the bottom half of the inning, the lead lasts two pitches. It is Dave Brain once again coming up large. Later that inning, Cogswell gets it deep enough to bring Dick Higgum home from third, putting the Jacks ahead once again. I love this guy's last name. Look, look at it, let's, let's see his picture again. That's the most Cogswell looking person I've ever seen in my life. Cogswell, hmm, yes, Ed Cogswell. First baseman of the Union Jacks, Charles, pip pip. Yeah. I'm running my mouth because I wanted a great story here but couldn't turn up anything online. Except this t-shirt. That, my friends, is an obscure ass t-shirt. Who has two thumbs and loves baseball players from the late 1800s? Melot leads off the sixth and that one's deep. We are tied at five. That tie holds into the seventh and it's in big part due to Albert Pujols. He came in to relieve Tris Speaker and he's been doing an admirable job, recording five outs and only giving up two runs. This slots right into his passable performances this season with the Ducks. Let's look at that game log. Two outings that were scoreless and another where he didn't even give up a hit. If the Angels knew they were sitting on that, maybe the $206,362.85 they paid him per hit would go down a little easier. That's right, I have a calculator, I did the math. Great opportunity for Deliberately Offensive to score in the seventh with men on the corners and Roger Hornsby at the plate with only one out. The Jacks bring in Jim McCormick to face him. He started game five but was knocked around and so they took him out in the third inning, only having thrown 48 pitches. Let's see if he's got anything left in the tank here. Full count to Hornsby, and he goes out looking. A huge strikeout. And now only one more batter to get. And he does. Lou Gehrig goes down on strikes, and the Union Jacks escape unscathed. That lights a fire under the Union Jacks derriere because they come on strong. Hugh Nickel with the bags loaded and one down, and he brings the leading run home. 6-5 Jacks. That causes the offensive to go to the pen, and it's our good friend Charlie Geringer. If you're not up to date with the videos, first of all, what's wrong with you? Who starts a series on game six? But to bring you up to speed, Geringer at one point was unsuccessful at retiring 11 straight batters in the series. He comes in with an ERA of 270. There's no choice though. You've got a squad without pitchers, so everybody gets their turn on the mound, even the feeble. Oh, he dings Tom Brown here, and that puts the Jacks up too. Next up, Bobby Thompson, and he's gonna bring in two more. That's 9-5 Jacks, and they take one more in the eighth to make it 10-5. And that's how we enter the ninth inning. Three outs to get five runs, or the offensive season is over. We've certainly seen them do a lot more with a lot less. 
Phil Stockman on the pitch. The offensive had all sorts of trouble with him in game one, and they're out to a bad start here. That's Cap Anson striking out looking. Babe Ruth up next, and he grounds out. Rogers Hornsby is their last hope. It may be for him that the bell tolls, but he's going out on death's door with a dinger. 10-6, but it was too little too late. Lou Gehrig up and he's first pitch swinging. That looks like an easy fly out. It is. The Union Jacks advance to the first Doug's championship. Who had these guys in the finals? I, I, I can't see. But they're going to contend for the championship for good reason. The guys that produced tonight have been producing all series long. Dave Brain, Tom Brown, and Hobie Ferris had five combined RBIs tonight. And that trio put up a combined total of 44 runs batted in in this series. George Chalmers was solid on the mound, going six and a third, giving up five. But that's nothing when you look at the 53 run affair we had a few nights ago. On the offensive side, outside of Coors Field, the ridiculous pop just wasn't there. Cap Anson, Robin Yount, and Lou Gehrig combined for an 0 for 13 performance including five strikeouts who's ready for some championship games one and two kick off on monday january 10th it's the top seed advancing from both sides so i'm not even sure where we're going to start play i guess, I guess we'll find out monday and now and now and now just between you and me we're going to do something a little bit different today we don't want people to realize this series didn't require a Game 7, so I'm going to sign out like I do traditionally, and then we're going to replay some of Game 1 just to beef up the playtime and make it look like there's the possibility of a Game 7. I hate spoilers. So with that... <clears throat> excuse me, excuse me. So with that, here's your daily reminder to like and subscribe to help us out, and I've been Johnny Paprika for Hamish. Hoping all your balls are fair and all your wood is good. Good night, everybody.